Hello everyone. In this video, let's see how we can create pie charts using geometry nodes. The blend file we create here is available on GitHub. You will find the link in video description. I'll open Blender and let's open a geometry node editor window. I'll create a new geometry nodes tree and add a curve primitive arc. This is basically our pie segment. I'll increase the resolution to a higher value. There are two important values in this node, the start angle and sweep angle that we need to calculate for each pie segment. Let's see how we can calculate the sweep angle. Let's say we want to create a pie chart of three elements with values, let's say A equal to 15, B equal to 8 and C equal to 7. Now how much portion of the pie A will get will depend on the ratio of its value to the total of all values. So the total of all these values is basically 30 and the portion of pie A will get is basically 15 divided by 30. Similarly for B it will be 8 divided by 30 and for C it will be 7 divided by 30. Now if you look at the pie, the total angle is this much that is 2 pi. 360 degrees and this 2 pi corresponds to this total value of 30. So the portion of pi A will get will basically be half of this value that is 15 divided by 30 multiplied by 2 pi. And similarly the value B will get will be 8 divided by 30 into 2 pi and so on the remaining for C. Now let's do the same thing in geometry node. I'll create a group of this arc. Remove all the input connections. And we'll start with the divide node. We want to divide two values, the actual value of that element and the total value. So let's call the second input socket as total. And we then multiply this by 2 pi and that will be our sweep angle. I'll tab out of the group and connect the first input to the group input. Let's call this the first element that is A. And let's have one more element to start with. I'll call it B. And we need to take the total of the two, so I'll add A with B and feed the total to our node group. Let's rename this group as pi segment and let's call the second value B. So now we have two elements A and B, we have taken the total and done the calculation here. Now if I decrease the value of A, you will see that the sweep angle of the arc changes which means that the portion of the pi which A gets decreases. Let's also connect this to center so we get a complete segment. This is our basic pi segment. We can also create a segment for B in the same way and we'll add a join node join geometry to join these two pi segments. Now the problem is for both the start angle is 0 and we also need to calculate the start angle for each of these segments. For the first segment it will be 0 that's fine but for the second segment it will start where the first segment ends. That is the total of the start value and the sweep angle. So let's also take the start value from input and add it to the sweep angle. We have already calculated the sweep angle so let's add a math add node and add this sweep angle with another input and let's call this start. We can output this value through the group output and call it the end for that particular segment. 
Now for the first pi segment, the start will be 0. And for the second pi segment, the start will be end of the previous segment. Let's connect this start to the start angle also. Now we see that by changing these values, we get both A and B segments correctly. The first pi segment is A and the second one is B. For time being, I'll exclude the B value from joint geometry so that we can focus on a single segment. Now we want to add the text in the center of this pi segment representing the percentage of that particular element. We already have the percentage here after we divide the element value with the total. So let's just multiply this by 100. So we get the actual percentage value and then we can convert this to a string using value to string node with two decimal places. And let's use this as the text for our string to curves node. We can add a join geometry node and join this curve with the text. So now we have the actual percentage value here. Let's also add a percentage sign. Maybe we can reduce the size of this text. Let's say 0.2. The next thing we want to do is center this text on this pi segment. The way we will do that is basically we average the position of all the vertices of this pi segment and then offset the position of each vertex of this text with that particular average value. But before that, let's fill both the curves the arc segment curve as well as the text curve. So I'll add a fill curve node for both arc as well as for the string. And let's also extrude both the objects. So we'll get some thickness. So I'll add extrude mesh and extrude this by some small negative value. We want to connect this also to the joint geometry so we get the upper part filled. Similarly, let's also extrude the text. But this time we will extrude by a positive value. Now let's try and center this text on the pi segment. As we discussed, we need to take the average of all these vertices of the pi segment. So I'll add the attribute statistic node changes to vector and this one to face because we want to average out on face. Then our geometry is basically this one and the attribute is basically just the position of all the vertices. Now we want to use this value to offset the vertices of these strings. So I'll add a set position node for the string and offset its vertices by this value. And then we can change the vertical and horizontal alignment of this text to center and middle. So we get the text in the center of the segment. We can also specify how much this segment we want to be shifted along this axis so that we can shift individual segments of the pi to separate out some of them. So what we want to do is basically shift this segment of pi along this particular vector by some certain value, let's say R x or R. And the next position we can calculate by simply taking this particular theta, which is actually half of this entire angle. Let's call the entire angle theta. So this will be theta by 2. And this particular part, this will be our r cos theta. And this is the vertical part will be r sin theta. Basically, this will be y and this will be x. So we need a combined x, y, z node first. 
and we have calculated the theta here at this point. We will first divide it by 2 and take the cosine and multiply this with the shift value which will be our input again. So I will add a multiply node and take a shift value from input. Here we are getting r into cos of theta by 2 that we will fit to the combined xyz. Similarly we want sin of theta by 2. So I will have a sin node here, another multiply node and we multiply sin theta by 2 with r. That is our y and let us call this value shift. And finally, we will have a set position node and offset the position of this entire thing by this particular value. Now you see the segment has got shifted by this particular amount. I will come out of the group and let us add this input to the group input and call it a shift. We will have shift for each individual element. So if I change now this value, the pi segment will shift as desired. Finally, let's also add some materials, one for text and one for the entire pi segment. So when we are done with creating the text, we'll add a set material node. And for both the surface of the pi segment and the pi segment itself, we will have another set material node. Let's get these values again from the group input. So this material we are going to get from group and let's call it text material. And let's call this the segment material. Again, we will get these values from group input. We can have a common text material, but we can assign separate materials to each individual segment and I will call this A material so that we can have similar materials for other segments also. Let us quickly create some materials. So this can be our text material add another one and call it A material. Let us assign a different color to it. And we can see now we have the appropriate materials also. So the same thing we want to do for B. We already have the group node. We just need to feed in the appropriate values. So I will keep this shift for B 0 for now. So let us get these three values from the group input, shift, text material and segment material. Actually, we don't need text material because we can use the same text material from here. But we can use a separate segment material for segment B. Let's create it and let's assign it a different color. The end of segment A will be start of segment B. And the other values we are getting from group input. So let's connect this to join geometry and we can see the second segment also on the pi. We just need to assign the B material to this. Now we have the value of A, then A material and A shift, value of B, B material and B shift. Let's add one more element. We can add as many element as we want now. The only thing is we need to create those many sockets also in the input. So again this start will come from the end of the previous segment. The value will be coming from group input. Let's call it C. The shift also will be coming from group input. This will be our C shift and the material for C also from the group input. This will be our C material. Let's create another material 
and call it C material and assign it to the segment C. Actually, it's C value and this is C shear. So, we also need to add this C to the total. So, we have another add node where we add the previous total to the value of C. And instead of this, the total will be coming from this now. Now we see that we have got the pie chart. If we want to add another element, we just need to duplicate this, add the sockets, and just add a new add node to update the total. We can control most of the values from here. That is the shift of each element. Actually, we missed one thing. While calculating the shift, we need to take not just the sweep angle, but the total of sweep and start. For the first segment, it worked because the start angle for the first segment is zero. But from the second segment on, we also need to consider the start angle. So let's add that also here. So now we have the right movement. Similarly for C also we can shift. And we have our pie chart ready. Thanks very much for watching. If you have any questions or suggestions, please leave a comment on this video.